Okay, I was sitting in the back thinking, I'm so glad I don't have to follow the theater professor. Because <laughs> when you look at the flyer, my, there's somebody else and then me. But then Sarah looked at me and said, come on up here. Uh, thank you, Troy. That was wonderful and very engaging and entertaining. And I apologize in advance for what you're about to see from me. Um, so I'm John Johnson. I'm the coordinator of the African American Center for Academic Excellence. It is a mouthful. Um, but I'm also a social psychologist. Um, I'll get to why that's relevant in a second. Um, I've been here for about a year at HSU. And last spring, I had the, the pleasure of coming to a conference where I saw a bunch of really amazing and interesting presentations. And one of which was a presentation about um, a faculty member who gave their students, on occasion, a virtual chocolate. So it was a virtual chocolate that was embedded like in an email communication or correspondence between the instructor and the student. And that instructor was talking about how this little thing made a difference in how the students were engaging and receiving uh, information from that professor. So I was thinking, is there a little thing that I know that I do that might be of use? Um, and I thought I had one, so I said I'll present it at unconference. This is a clicker, right? Is it a clicker or is there something else? No. This is not a clicker. This is a, there is a clicker. I don't need a clicker. I don't have that many slides. Yeah. OK, so it's a big world. There's a big, big world that we live in. And what we're seeing is that our our classrooms are these really diverse spaces. And there's this tendency in psychology, there's a theory in psychology, rather, that's called confirmation bias. So we tend to seek out information that confirms our existing uh, beliefs or our views. And we'll also reject information that is inconsistent with, that, with, with our existing views. So confirmation bias can be a really big problem. And then at the same time, uh, we have a lot of students in our classrooms that are um, emerging adults engaged in the process of exploring their identity and are seeking and, and in need of um, affirmation and validation about how they're interpreting the world um, as it exists. So what I found in my experience, both as a student and as an instructor, is that oftentimes we'll miss each other. Um, talk past each other, will get in arguments and debates and not allow for multiple perspectives or experiences to exist simultaneously. So some time ago, I came up with a very, very, I think, simple one slide visual exercise at the beginning of every workshop or class that I teach, simply to communicate to the people in the room what we're trying to accomplish. Right? I think uh, uh, Stephen Covey has a really elegant um, quote, which is, uh, seek first to understand, then be understood. I use this five houses image, and what I found over time is that students will see it, it'll resonate, and then oftentimes we can refer back to it multiple times over the course of the semester. So what you'll see here is a really basic image. You have five houses on the screen. As the instructions indicate, the first three are identical, and the last two are different different from each other, and different from the first three. There's a person on the left, a person on the right. It doesn't matter the, the gender or sex or whatever. It doesn't matter, right? That's just, I was using it to distinguish that there were two different people. And let's say each person goes to three houses, right? Which, what's obvious is that the person on the left went to three houses, and they were all the same house. The person on the right went to three houses, and each house was different from each other. And then when they get into that third house for each of them, they start talking about what houses look like. And this is when we run into trouble. Because this person's experience is valid, it's legitimate, it's real, and for them, all houses are the same. It's difficult for them to imagine something different because they've never had a different kind of experience. For this person, every house has been different. So when they enter into that space, they're talking about, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Clearly, there's all these other things that exist in houses, and there's different configurations, different shapes of windows, blah, 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 blah. This person, they can't, they can't connect to each other. 
So they talk past each other, they talk over each other, because each of them is, is in some way maybe looking for the other person to confirm or affirm what they already thought about habits. But it's important for us to understand, especially, and I use this in classrooms, to understand that when we come into the class, many of us are going to be engaging with the same content, the same material, but how we interpret and receive that information might be different. So we don't need to look to the next person or to uh, the, the student next to me to have the same opinion as me. But if we embrace each other and understand that we all have different paths that inform our lens, we can learn from each other collectively. That's it. Five houses. <laughs>